Before starting to write the code, you're gonna need a couple of dependencies installed on your computer. I'm gonna list everything in the description, but it's basically the Windows kits, and that includes the Windows driver kit and some Visual Studio tools. So make sure to install those before starting to write the code. Now onto the code, I'm gonna start by defining AMD64. And the reason for that is I'm gonna write this driver for Windows 10 x64. Afterwards, I'm gonna include a file that is called wdm.h. wdm stands for Windows driver model. And the second file I'm gonna include is, for this I'm gonna actually go to the documentation of the function I wanna use. And this function is called ke bug check. This basically makes a blue screen. This causes a blue screen on the computer. And as you can see, if you go to the requirements section, you can see that this actually comes from a header called ntddk.h. So I'm just gonna include this as well. And now onto the actual code. This function is gonna return empty status. This is a type of the return. And this is gonna be the driver entry. This is gonna be the entry point of the driver. And it's gonna get two parameters. This is the signature. I'm just gonna disregard both. So I'm gonna call both A and B. This is a good point to remind that this code is just for fun and it's definitely not for production. Inside of this function, all I'm gonna do is just call ke bug check. And this is how it's called. We just pass in an error code. This, will, this is an actual code that you'll see in the blue screen. So I'm gonna put something indicative here. Let's put AABB, CC, and then DD. Cause you can see the code in hexadecimal when the blue screen occurs. Afterwards, I'm gonna return. I'm just gonna turn status success. Now I can go ahead and save this code. And now I'm gonna open a program that comes after you install Visual Studio Build Tools. And this is called x64 native tools command prompt for Visual Studio 2022. So I'm gonna open this. And I'm gonna to navigate to the folder with my code. I'm gonna start by running the Visual Studio compiler, which is called CL. And I'm gonna pass in slash C. This means that it compiles only, it's not gonna run the linker. I'm gonna run the linker separately afterwards. First thing, I'm gonna pass the C file, which is driver.c. Afterwards, I'm gonna specify a custom include path with slash capital I. For the include path, I'm gonna specify a custom folder that comes with the Windows driver kit. And I'm gonna specify the full location for this. So this comes from C program files. Afterwards, Windows kits. And then I'm gonna to go to the include folder here. Choose the version according to where you have it installed on your computer. My computer has this version. And finally, KM afterwards. KM stands for kernel mode. Afterwards, if you run DIR here, we're gonna see that I produced an object file. Now we can go ahead and pass this file to the linker to actually make the driver. Second parameter for the linker is gonna be the library that contains the definition of the function that we used. Remember, we used the function kbugcheck. If you go back here to the documentation, we navigate to the requirements section. We can see that the library this comes from is ntoskernel.lib. So this is the library I'm gonna to specify to linker to use. Location is gonna be similar to the include location, except instead of slash include, I'm gonna write here slash lib. After k, I'm gonna I'm gonna write x64, and finally ntos kernel dot lib. Afterwards, I'm gonna specify a couple of additional flags. For example, subsystem is gonna be native. I'm gonna specify a driver flag, which is gonna be wdm, which stands for Windows driver model. Finally, the entry point, which as we define it in the code is driver entry. Now, if you take a look at dir. We can see that we have here another file that is driver.sys. This is the actual driver that we're gonna load into the system. Now comes the second step in which I'm gonna restart my computer in a special mode that will let me install drivers that are unsigned. Notice that it's not a great idea to actually do this on your computer, so maybe you'll prefer doing it on a virtual machine, but I don't really care, so I'm just gonna run it on my computer. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is actually go to the start menu and go to the power options. And while pressing on restart, hold the shift and press restart with shift. Afterwards, Windows will change to something like this and you're gonna to wanna to press on troubleshoot, advanced options, startup settings, 
and I'm going to restart the computer in this mode. Once you arrive at this screen, you're going to want to press on 7, which means disable driver signature enforcement. After the computer finished booting up with driver signature checking disabled, let's go ahead and open a terminal with administrator rights and navigate again to the folder that we had our driver inside. And I'm going to start by creating the driver service. We're going to use SC for this. And finally, afterwards, create. For example, let's call it nearest blue screen driver. Afterwards, bin path. This will be the full path to driver. To the driver sys file. And finish it off with type equals kernel. This will actually specify that this is a kernel driver and not just a regular service because you know that SC can also create regular services. SC can also be used to actually load drivers onto the system. This is not really a service, we're just using SC to load it, the driver. And now let's finally run SC start with the driver's name. And here's blue screen driver. As you can see, we actually created a blue screen. And if you just go ahead and check out the stop code, you can see that this is exactly what we put in the code. After you finish playing around with the driver, don't forget to delete it. And for this, we're going to use, again, an, an administrator terminal. I'm going to run SC delete with my driver's name, which was Nears blue screen driver. And now if you run SC query Nears blue screen driver, it's supposed to say that this does not exist. Subscribe for more programming videos and thanks for watching.